This video is sponsored by Incogni. Once towering over the north shore of Long Island, Harbor Hill was more than just an opulent mansion. It was a symbol of ambition, wealth, and the relentless pursuit of prestige that defined America's Gilded Age. Built by Clarence McKay, heir to one of the greatest fortunes in American history, Harbor Hill started as a testament to the grandeur and excess of a bygone era. Designed by the renowned architectural firm McKim, Mead & White, this colossal estate represented the height of American aristocracy, where business titans, European royals, and the social elite gathered under the gilded roof. But like so many of the other grand estates that once lined Long Island's Gold Coast, Harbor Hill could not escape the inevitable passage of time and the shifting tides of fortune. Its meteoric rise and tragic fall mirror the very nature of the Gilded Age itself, an era of lavish dreams built on fragile foundations. Hi everyone, Ken here. Hit that subscribe button and let's explore this house. Clarence McKay was the son of silver magnate John McKay, who made his fortune during the Comstock Load Silver Rush in Nevada. Upon his father's death, Clarence inherited not just a vast fortune, but a legacy of ambition and influence. Determined to cement his family's place among America's elite, Clarence envisioned a home that would rival the palaces of Europe, a place where his family's wealth and status would be immortalized in stone and marble. Speaking of protecting legacies, let's talk about how you can protect your personal data in today's digital age. With so much of our information available online, it's surprisingly easy for data brokers to collect and sell your private details without you even knowing. That's where Incogni comes in. Incogni works on your behalf to contact data brokers, removing your personal information from their databases and keeping it off for good. I recently tried it myself and I was shocked at just how much data was floating around about me information that could be used in ways I'd never consented to. With Incogni, all I had to do was create an account and let them handle the rest. They reached out to data brokers, dealt with objections, and kept me updated every step of the way. The whole process was completely automated, which meant I could just kick back and watch my digital footprint shrink. If you're looking to protect your legacy, or at least your privacy, Incogni is a must. Use the link in the video description and my code to get 60% off an annual plan, and with their 30-day money-back guarantee, there is no risk in giving it a try. Thank you Incogni for sponsoring today's video, now let's get back to Harbor Hill. For this grand vision, McKay turned to Stanford White, the most celebrated architect of the day, whose designs for the firm McKim, Mead & White had already shaped much of the Gilded Age's architectural landscape. White, known for his ability to blend classical European influences with American innovation, took on the challenge with a signature flair. His designs for Harbor Hill were nothing short of spectacular, creating what would become one of the largest and most luxurious private homes in America. Construction began in 1899, and over the next few years, the sprawling estate took shape. When completed in 1902, Harbor Hill stood as a 60-room mansion perched on one of the highest points on Long Island, offering sweeping views of the surrounding landscape and the distant waters of Hempstead Harbor. The mansion's architectural grandeur was immediately apparent, its smooth stone facade, adorned with towering columns and intricate carvings, give it the air of a European chateau transported to the American countryside. The scale of Harbor Hill was nothing short of immense. The estate sprawled across 688 acres of manicured gardens, woodlands, and parklands. The entrance to the estate was a grand spectacle in itself. Visitors were greeted by a sweeping driveway that wound its way through rolling hills and formal gardens, leading to the mansion's imposing main entrance. Inside, Harbor Hill was a marvel of artistry and craftsmanship, with a sweeping staircase that set the stage for lavish balls and gatherings that the McKays would host. The drawing rooms were furnished with the finest European antiques, tapestries, and paintings, while the dining room, with its immense fireplace and intricately carved wood paneling, could see dozens of guests for elaborate dinners. Every room in the house was designed to impress, from the private family quarters to the ornate guest suites that hosted royalty, business magnates, and the upper echelons of society. One of the most remarkable aspects of Harbor Hill was its attention to both luxury and innovation. The mansion was equipped with the most modern conveniences of the time, including electric lighting, telephones, and an advanced heating system. McKay, whose fortune came in part from the telegraph and telecommunications industry, ensured that his home was a model of cutting-edge technology, a blend of old-world elegance and modern efficiency. The estate's grounds were equally impressive, designed by landscape architect Guy Lau, the gardens featured formal terraces, marble fountains, reflecting pools, and expansive lawns. Beyond the formal gardens, the estate extended into parklands and woodlands, complete with stables, greenhouses, and a dairy farm. Harbor Hill was not just a home, it was a self-sustaining world where the McKays could indulge in their passions. Harbor Hill quickly became one of the premier social destinations on Long Island. 
Clarence McCain and his wife Catherine were central figures in the social scene of New York's elite. Catherine, a renowned beauty and suffragist, brought both charm and intellect to the grand parties and gatherings held at Harbor Hill. The McKees hosted lavish soirees, dinners, and garden parties with guests including some of the most influential figures of the time. One of the most famous visitors to Harbor Hill was the Prince of Wales, later King Edward VIII, who stayed at the mansion during a trip to America. The estate became synonymous with high society and culture, a place where business, art, and politics converged under the roof of one of America's grandest homes. Despite its grandeur and its place at the center of high society, Harbor Hill's fate was tied to the fortunes of its owners, and to the broader societal shifts that would come to define the early 20th century. Clarence McKay's business empire, built on telecommunications and the transatlantic telegraph, faced increasing competition and financial difficulties in the years following World War I. The post-war period saw a decline in the fortunes of many of the Gilded Age's wealthiest families, as the extravagant lifestyles of the past became harder to sustain in a rapidly changing world. The Great Depression of the 1930s dealt a final blow to the McKays' financial stability. Clarence McKay, formerly one of the richest men in America, found himself struggling to maintain the vast estate. The cost of keeping up Harbor Hill, with over a hundred staff, sprawling grounds, and constant need for repairs, became overwhelming. By the time of Clarence's death in 1938, Harbor Hill was already in decline. The estate passed to McKay's children, but none of them were able or willing to take on the immense responsibility of maintaining such a grand estate. As the realities of the 20th century set in, Harbor Hill, like so many other Gold Coast mansions, became a relic of a bygone era. By the 1940s, it was clear that the house would not be saved, and in 1947, the estate was sold to developers who demolished it within a few short years, reducing its marble columns and gilded rooms to rubble. The land that once housed one of the greatest estates in American history was subdivided into suburban lots, with modern homes and developments taking the place of its grand gardens and formal lawns. Harbor Hill, once a shining symbol of wealth and power, disappeared from the landscape, leaving behind only memories and photographs. Its demolition marked the end of an era, not just for the McKays, but for the entire Gold Coast of Long Island. What did you think about Harbor Hill? Did anything in particular stick out to you? Let me know down below in the comments section. I'd also like to say a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Incogni. Make sure to check out their link in the video description to get started today. As always, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time on This House.